friends, welcome back to Mimi's Mixed Bag. Thank you so much for stopping by. If this is your first visit, please check out my channel. I've got hundreds of home decor projects and I know you'll find something you like. Today I'm participating in a fun collab with two very talented ladies, Kelly with Kelly's Creations DIY and Mary Beth with MB Gray Designs. We are going to show you how to make a bunch of inexpensive little Easter decor for your tiered trays and then we're going to show you our decorated trays. So today I've got five little simple projects. Half of them will be things that you may even have around the house and in your stash. I bought just a few little things from Dollar Tree to complete a few of them. All right, so the first thing I want to do is a little standing garden gate and I'm going to achieve that with some tongue depressors paint stir stick and two regular popsicle sticks. So the first thing I need to do is get some of my wood for my garden gate prepped. I've got six tongue depressors here and I don't want them to look like tongue depressors so on one end I'm going to cut the little rounded end off. On the other end I'm going to cut them pointed like a picket fence. These are super simple to cut. If you've got some pretty heavy duty scissors they will cut through pretty easy. Now the two popsicle sticks are going to serve as my little fence braces. I won't have to do anything to that. Now I want my little garden gate to be standing. This part right here is strictly optional. It just depending on the size of your tray, you might could just lean your little fence up against the center post or something. But I'm going to try to make mine freestanding and I'm using a paint stir stick and I'm going to cut two five inch pieces. All right, I have all my wood prepped now and I'm ready to glue everything together. It only took just a minute to snip these tongue depressors into shape, so they definitely look like little miniature fence boards. Now, one thing you, you might want to do before you glue everything together is to measure your tiered tray that you're going to put this on because you might need to make a shorter fence. The two paint stir sticks are going to be my stand. And it's kind of hard to see overhead camera, but I'm going to just put hot glue on the front and the back of each fence board and sandwich it in between this stand. And then I will glue my braces on. What I have here is a freestanding little garden gate. You could make this as elaborate as you wanted to. You could put little pots here. You could put little miniature rabbits. Uh, I'm going to hang a little banner right here on mine. All right, I've got the little finishing touches on it now. I just hot glued jute twine across the top and stuck some Easter stickers across the jute twine, placed the little bunny there, and glued a button for the handle. So in 30 minutes, I had a handful of tongue depressors, and now I have an adorable Easter fence. All right, project number two is super simple and super quick. You're going to need a few strips of some green fabric or some ribbon, whatever you can come up with. This is some strips of cotton fabric that somebody gave me that was in my stash and I, and I even have an old piece of ruffled looking rickrack I'm going to add in the mix. So it's going to work out just fine. This is going to be my carrot greenery. Now the project we're making originally was like a little child's carrot treat container and I just thought it'd be cute to make some if you've never seen any and add them to the tiered tray. You're going to need cardstock for this project because paper is just really too flimsy. So I looked through my stash and found three six by six pieces. Now your carrots are just going to depend on how big. You could do it four by four, five by five, but six by six will be as about as big a carrot as you probably want. So I could certainly make them smaller if my tray was smaller. So I, the first thing I need to do is I'm going to roll up this six by six piece of paper and secure it really good with glue. And it's going to look just like three toilet paper tubes. And I so just I'm used my paper glue and this is the Berry Art Precision Craft Glue. This is some great stuff on paper. All right, so now I'm ready to close up one end of my tube. A little line of glue here and I'm gonna squeeze it shut. Now if you were going to use these as little candy treat containers this is the time you would stuff chocolate kisses whatever you can find to fit down in there. All right so now I'm ready to work on my greenery. So I'm going to cut several pieces of my green strips about four inches long because about an inch of it is going to go inside the carrot. I've got my green strips cut up. Whatever I did on this end, I'm going to do opposite on this end. 
And what that does, it ends up creating kind of a carrot triangle shape. Just depends on which way you lay the tube. Right, my three little carrots are done. I love the little green rag strips. I think anything goes. You could use green raffia, green yarn, green paper, whatever you can come up with. But these are some pretty cute little carrots you can make in 15 minutes. I'm gonna start project number three because I need this to dry overnight. Now Dollar Tree does sell the blank Easter eggs. I just didn't want to make a special trip. I knew I had this egg garland from there and I'm going to make it work. So I'm going to take it out of the package and take it apart and I'm going to have six eggs to work with. All right, I went ahead and put a little smear of wood filler on my staple holes. If you buy the blank package of eggs, you won't have to worry about that, but I'm trying to make this garland work and it'll be fine. Now I'm making three dimensional eggs. These are too thick for me to score and kind of snap. So I'm gonna just have to treat it like a piece of wood and put it in my miter box and cut them in half. I got that miter saw for this past Christmas and this is the first time I've had the opportunity to use it and it worked beautifully. Just perfect for cutting this Dollar Tree stuff. Now what I have is I'm gonna have three sets of these. I'm gonna have a whole one and two halves. Dude. But the front and back of all three pieces need to match. Is I'm gonna glue these sides to the whole one and it's going to just sit as a three-dimensional egg like this. I wanted to come back on here and tell you that whether you decoupage both sides or you paint, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and pull this printed buffalo plaid paper off so that you don't have to fight to cover that up. It's the next day and I have my eggs decorated. It's pretty much a blank canvas when it comes to this because there's a million things you could do. I just did some polka dots and some rosettes. This one, I decoupaged some tissue paper. You could use scrap paper. It's whatever look you want your eggs to be. Now, my original plan was for my eggs to stand up straight, but I don't believe they're going to do that. There's just not enough surface touching the table for them to stand. But I think just for time purposes, I'm just gonna hot glue them like I had planned, and then mine will just be laying down eggs. There's nothing wrong with that. Eggs lay all different ways, and so mine just won't be upright. But I can always go back and smooth out the bottom so they will stand up if I choose to. All right, here are my 3D eggs. I think you could just prop them up against some other things on the tiered tray, and you could get them to stand with no problem. But just really like the look of them, and they'll be a cute addition to the tray. Project number four is a little potted plant and my original plan was to take this little eight ounce cup and cut it in half and that would give me my little pot. But when I cooked dinner last night, I ended up having this little jalapeno can. So I'm gonna take the label off. It's already the perfect size, so I don't have to cut it or anything. And at this point, you could just wrap it in scrapbook paper. That would be really cute. I'm gonna take about a dozen popsicle sticks, cut them in half and glue them around the little can. So now I'm gonna leave them the natural color, but I like this being light color for spring. Now I took four wooden beads and I'm going to hot glue those on the bottom and that's gonna give me some little ball feet. I think that'll be really cute. Now to make the potted plant, fit some styrofoam in the can. I've got some Dollar Tree lavender and I'm gonna stick that in there. And then I have a little bit of some green moss that I'll use to help cover up the styrofoam. Super easy to put together and I'll show you what it looks like. I hot glued a little ribbon around the belly of the can. I don't think no one would ever guess this was a jalapeno can. The little ball feet just are a cute little addition and the size of the Dollar Tree lavender is just the perfect scale for a tiered tray. All right, my last and final project is I would almost consider another trash to treasure. I'm crafting with a shirt I have. This was actually a brand new shirt my husband washed with an ink pen, and I love the fabric of the shirt and decided that I was gonna keep the fabric to craft with. So this is the perfect example of how you can build up your fabric stash. What I'm gonna make is kind of a candle ring, but I'm gonna make it using a ponytail holder. Now this candle ring, you could stretch it around a little flower pot. You could stretch it around a little votive cup and that's what I plan to do. So what I need to do is go ahead and cut my little cotton fabric up into one by six inch pieces. 
not actually cutting the strips. I am snipping the fabric in one inch sections and I'm ripping the strips. So I'm just gonna cut as many as I think I need and I can always cut more. All that's left to do is tie my strips onto the ponytail holder. Just a simple over and under knot, pull it tight, slide it down beside the next one. I'm just gonna keep tying and sliding it down until I can't fit any more on this ring. And it'll be nice and full and fluffy. I purposely made my strips a little longer just to make it easier on myself when I'm tying it around. If you end up cutting them like four inches, you just don't have enough length to tie. And so it just makes it easier to cut them longer and then that way you can trim it up when you're done. And then just kind of give it a haircut. I just kind of trim around some of the wild ones. It'll make it look just a little bit better. After I trim it, this is what it's going to look like. I'm just going to fit it over a little votive candle and it will just give it a little skirt around it. Here are my five new easy inexpensive projects all together that I'm going to add along with a few other odds and ends I already have. So here you go friends, this is my new tiered tray in the center of my kitchen island. It's really big and I can fit lots of fun things on it for every season. Be sure and check out Kelly and Mary Best's video, link below, and I appreciate you watching.